And welcome to Rouge Radio once again. I'm Reed Duffy, and very pleased to be joined by former CFL All-Star and Grey Cup champion, but probably better known as the kissing bandit of the sports world, is Adriano Belli. And Adriano, it's a pleasure to be on with you. How you doing, Sugar? It's, the pleasure's all mine. And now, uh, first off, I'm sure uh, we got to start way back when you came into the CFL University of Houston product, and uh, you had an amazing career overall. I mean, a Grey Cup championship. CFL Eastern All Star a couple of times, a CFL All Star as well. It was a, it was an amazing run, and you finally called it a career uh, this past spring. Uh, I mean, what what were the emotions like when you decided that uh, the CFL was uh, done for you? Boy, you know what? I fooled those coaches long enough into thinking that I was a good player. Uh, it was about time. I mean, I I've given the sport all I had. I've loved chasing quarterbacks and playing in this great league. That is the CFL. Uh, I mean, being a Canadian kid and having the chance to uh, go to school in the States and, and play in the NFL for a while, but come up to Canada and enjoy the whole country. Every city in Canada I've played in, I've enjoyed the food, the culture. I've kicked quarterbacks' asses all over our country, and I feel so lucky to have been part of uh, such a great heritage that is the Canadian Football League. Hey, Jared, I just want to ask you a couple of questions on your CFL career. And the first one would be, what are maybe a couple of the, the major highlights that stick out as moments that, that you would think that, yeah, that made me what I was in the CFL? Well, obviously winning the Great Cup in 02 was, it was a special time. And that was a special team with Don Matthews and company. Um, you know, I, I guess I'll be remembered as the all-time penalty leader in the damn league. Um, I, I tried my best not to get penalties, but... I just, I played on the line, and uh, these coaches, they always told me, you know, we're bringing you in to be a troublemaker, so uh, try to make the quarterbacks have a bad day. I've had so many great memories. I've played with so many great guys like Mike O'Shea, Anthony Calvillo, Danny McManus, Damon Allen over the years, but just hanging out with the guys and enjoying the Canadiana that is the CFL. Now, this is a question that uh, I've been asked to ask you by a couple of friends who are big CFL fans. Who was your favorite quarterback to take down? <laughs> you know, I used to love Kahari Jones because uh, he looked like with those big chubby cheeks, he looked like a little chipmunk in, uh, in his uniform and with that helmet on, and he would hold on to the rock. Um, I saw myself and Ed Fillion, we used to love playing against him because he'd give us a chance to get to him. You look at some of the guys that are having success now, uh, a la Anthony Calvillo, Ricky Ray, who's got a resurgence in his career, they're getting rid of the ball so damn fast. And I think that's the key to the CFL, to being successful as a quarterback in the CFL. So I used to pull my hair out with, with guys like Anthony Calvillo because – I could never get to him. I'd beat the offensive lineman. You'd have a fantastic pass rush move, and you just couldn't get to him. Was Anthony Cavill the, the hardest quarterback to get to, or would Danny McManus be on that list? Who was the, the toughest one to bring down? I, I'd say Anthony Calvillo for that matter. Not that he was he's a, an exceptional um, athlete above all other um, quarterbacks, but he understands the game. He understood that get the ball out of his hands before defensive linemen could get to him, but more importantly, before the secondary and linebackers could react to coverages. And uh, it seems to be the recipe to success in the CFL. Well, Adrian, after a brilliant career, you did uh, call it over on May 11th, I believe, of 2011, but then the IFAF World Championships came calling and you got a chance to represent Canada in Austria for that tournament. How did that initially come about? Were, were you sort of in mutual communication with Team Canada, or was it sort of out of the blue a chance to represent your country? Actually, at my retirement party, we had a, the Argonauts threw a nice retirement party for me on, the, on a boat in Harbour Front in Toronto. And uh, Coach Barker came up to me and he said, hey, would you like to play for Team Canada? Uh, they're, they're heading over to Europe this summer. And uh, I thought, you know what, I've, I've done pretty much everything I could have possibly wished for and hoped for in the CFL and, and other leagues, even playing in the, the XFL and university. I thought, I've never played for my national team. And it's something, you know, you growing up, you see hockey players get a chance to play for Team Canada. 
uh, all different types of sports do. And I jumped at the chance, and, and it was an incredible experience. I actually had a, a friend that I went to high school with from here in Hamilton, Justin Glover, who was one of the offensive linemen on the team that was uh, recently cut by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and that's how he ended up on the squad. And that seemed like it was a, a lot of that, that sentiment with the guys going over, a lot of CFL, either guys that had been in the CFL, such as yourself and uh, Shirkohachi Rizzuli, or guys that are looking to make the CFL that were on that team. Yes, first off, Justin was a warrior over there. He was whooping international butt the whole time. And, uh, you know, kids like that, I, I, I had so much fun being around younger guys that, uh, whose careers are just about to start. We had a great crew from Quebec, some kids from out west, Vancouver, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. We had guys from all across our country. And, you know, we were a younger team. Most of these national teams were, were older men my age. Uh, and guys that had played professional. But, boys, boy, did the boys fight hard. It made me so proud to be Canadian. And uh, we came up short in that final game, but uh, I, I couldn't have had a more, more proud uh, Canadian moment than when we had a seesaw battle against Japan and the weather was like 37 degrees Celsius. It was a war, and, uh, boy, we had so much fun. Looking back at that game, a lot of people, Japan has – to the surprise of some, been a bit of an international power, shall we say, in, in the football world. And Canada went right into that game almost, you would almost say an underdog. Canada's first run at the World Championships, and you guys took it to them and ended up knocking off Japan, who maybe a lot of people didn't think you, you guys would be able to beat, but you definitely went in, played that Canadian style, and, and put them away. I mean, that had to be a big moment for the team and, and the development of a national program. Absolutely. I mean, that, that Japanese team and most of these teams are teams that, uh, national teams that practice all year round. And uh, they were older players on, the, on those teams that have played together for many years. Our national team was put together in, in no less than a month. And we went over there and were able to beat uh, everyone but the States. Um, you know, you look at that Japanese team, most people in North America would think Japanese playing football. Are you crazy? Uh, they were an incredible team. They were the most diligent, well-coached team I've ever been a part of. Um, if that offensive, one offensive lineman was taking a step diagonal at six inches, they were all taking a step diagonal six inches. Uh, it, they were a fun team to play against, and, uh, boy, it, it was one of the toughest games. I mean, I've played in some, some really hard games. It was one of the biggest battles I've ever been a part of, and it, it was something special. Adriano, a silver medal for Canada overall. I mean, a great building block moving forward. How far off do you think that Canada is from being able to knock off the Americans in this tournament? And did it, the fact that it was contested under American rules and coming up through the CFL and a lot of guys from the CIS obviously playing the three-down Canadian rules, did that have an effect on the tournament as well? It did, absolutely. We noticed that... Uh, you know, I hadn't been a part of drives that lasted uh, – we had one drive lasted 20 plays. <laughs> In the CFL and Canadian football, that does not happen. Um, but, you know, we were going over there with younger players, players that uh, were in their early 20s, um, as opposed to the American squad that, you know, you could tell a lot of the guys had pro experience and had been NFL cuts um, – so I think, you know, heading into the next World Championships, if we can get a lot more guys that have pro experience and a little bit of an older team, um, I, I, I think we, could, uh, we should be able to, to win the championship. We had some tough kids. And like I said at the beginning of the, of the tournament, I'm, I'm proud to be around Canadians because we're tougher than anybody in the world. Is this something you'd want to do again? Would you go back as a player one more time for the World Championships if you're invited? <laughs> I think four years from now, I might be a little bit old. Um, you know, I'm 34 right now, and it was certainly not a cakewalk. It was very high-caliber uh, competition and great players. Uh, that final game had uh, close to 30, 35,000 people there, and it was electric. So I, I wouldn't want to uh, do the, the tournament any disgrace by trying to think I could play when I'm 40 years old. Uh, so that, that's it for me, but I'm, I'm certainly going to support that team the next time it comes around in some sort of a capacity, whether it be coaching 
or trying to recruit and get the best players on that team? Well, you certainly went out on a high note, Adriano. You were selected to the first team in, in terms of the All-Stars for the tournament. I mean, probably not a surprise for anybody who's watched CFL football and watched you hunt down quarterbacks over your career. But moving forward, as you said, uh, could coaching be next for Adriano Belli? What's your next step? A, a much-loved figure throughout the CFL, or much hated depending on if you're a quarterback or not. But would you want to get into coaching at that level, or do you have your eye on another position? Where, where do you go from here? Well, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't think I'd ever be a good coach because I never followed the rules properly. Uh, I was, <laughs> was too much of an individual, and, and being a defensive lineman, you can do that sometimes. Um, you know, a, a great coach uh, is Mike O'Shea, a player I played with, and he's going to be an incredible coach for years to come because he's so cerebral about the game. I was never cerebral about the game. I was more of a, let's go to war, boys. I want to kill somebody today. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm having fun. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying my retirement. I am doing quite a bit of television broadcasting with Sportsnet and uh, quite a bit of radio stuff. And I'm having fun uh, uh, tearing down quarterbacks verbally now as opposed to physically. So is that the future career for Adriano Belli, is sports broadcasting and going on from there? Yeah, I'm, I'm having fun with it. And, uh, you know, I'm a fan of our league. I'm, uh, I, you know, I, I hope to be an ambassador of the Canadian Football League for years to come. It's a special league, and I, I, I'm a fan also of the Americans that come up here and build a life up here. Um, you know, guys that play eight, nine, ten years up here that are Americans, they consider themselves Canadians, and, and so do I. That's a great point. That's something that's not said very often. The Americans, the, too many Americans that come up here and, and wash out get more attention than the Americans that come up here and have a respect for the Canadian game and build their lives as Canadians. Yes, I have a tremendous respect. You know, guys like Arlen Bruce, who have, who's grown into a mature player up here, guys like Jonathan Brown, um, I hold great memories with these guys, and uh, I, I do consider them part of the fabric of our, our league. Well, Adriano, it's great to have you now in the broadcasting world. You've been a great player for a long time, and I'm sure you'll be a great ambassador for the CFL for years to come. Thank you very much for joining us on Rouge Radio. Thank you. All the best and big kiss to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here with Adriano Belli for Rouge Radio. I'm Reed Duffy. Continue supporting Canadian football. Thank you very much.